Hey guys, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff, and a few days ago I picked up a Canon EOS R. So I thought I'd do a little video about um, my first impressions and the general sort of pros and cons that I've noticed so far. Hopefully it's helpful. Let's do it. Firstly, I'll just mention that we are in a new workspace. This is my new setup, my new office, and my new property uh, because of reasons that I'm here. And so you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this uh, this room in these videos and hopefully, I'll get it, it's a work in, pro work in progress, it's not finished, it's gonna be better, it's gonna look really cool. This is just a really quick video, uh, so it's yeah, looking a bit bare, the walls, that kind of thing, I'm gonna have it looking dope. So I just wanna add some context of why I picked up the EOS R when I do mostly video and it really does on paper look like quite a stunted, uh, video camera. It's well. It was mainly to uh, firstly film these kind of these scenes with me talking to the camera, and I don't need to. I don't, I don't need to worry about focus anymore. Because if I get closer, it'll realise that my face is close, and I can just. I don't have to worry about that. It's so so good. Canon's autofocus is so good. Um, and the other reason is I've for photography, which I do sometimes, and st I do love. I've been using a Canon uh, 5D Mark II for so long now, and it's just time. It's just time. It's still good, but I just, you know, it's just time to move. You know, I want a few more megapixels and better focusing. That was one of the main things. So, yeah. Right. Let's kick off this video with the cons, because uh, I like to. I like to be glass half full, and I'd like to get the cons out the way. So the top of the list when it comes to the cons, of course, it's the ter it's the terrible resolution options when it comes to video. If you buy this camera, you are pretty much you need to just accept that you're probably going to be shooting in HD, albeit very nice HD. But yeah, it does do 4K, of course. But you know, you all know that the it has a horrendous crop. I'll crop this. It now it looks like this, basically horrible. Uh, if you want to shoot in high frame rates, you're in 720p, albeit surprisingly good looking 720p, it's slightly soft, um, but not bad. And coming from a Sony a7S II, I kind of really struggled with the high frame rates in that camera too, because that has a two times crop, um, whereas there's no crop in the EOS R. Um, so there's, you know, there's pros and cons with both, really. Um, so there we go. It's an HD camera. I, I just I have to get over that, and um, and just you know, it's gonna be it's gonna speed up my workflow for these kind of things, um, which I appreciate. I mentioned the terrible codec in 4K. Yeah, if you're gonna use it, it will fill a 64 gig card in minutes, some minutes, not very long. That's the point. So if you're gonna, you give, if you insist on using 4K, you have that to deal with the enormous file sizes. Plus, you've got the huge crop. So I don't know how much I'm gonna, actually going to be shooting in 4K. We'll see. Okay, so I just want to interrupt myself just for a second. I I, I want to take that back. Um, I'm just editing it, and I just heard myself back, and I called it a terrible codec. It's not in 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 Canon's credit they got rid of the MJPEG codec, which was terrible, okay? The, the problem I have is that the, the codec that Canon have chosen for 4K, for all i 4K at 24 frames a second, is 480 megabits a second codec, which, what, who needs that? Honestly, it's, and it's 420 at 8-bit, why, I, I, I kind of the, the mind boggles. It's like why give a, give why give us a 4K mode with that high megabits megabit sample rate? It just it doesn't make any sense. You know that's that will eat up a card in no no time at all. So it's almost like they've it's another thing they've done to make 4K unusable with this camera. I know, I, I don't know. So I still have a complaint. I just—it's not inefficient a codec. It's just—it's just bloated. It's too big. It, it, it needs to be—I don't know—150 megabits a second. That would have been perfect. 100, 100 megabits a second. 150 megabits per second. And no crop. 
and it would have been this would have been phenomenal. But anyway, back to the video. The EOS R has basically the same sensor that you'll find in the 5D Mark IV, which is, I think, a good sensor. But even now, in 2019, when I'm filming this, is considered an older sensor. Um, but hey ho, it still performs okay. It's not up to, you know, par with the Sony sensors. But hey, uh, I wonder how much people will notice. I'm talking about photography mainly, of course. And then there's the fact that Canon only included one card slot, which I just think there's not really any kind of excuse for. Um, it it kind of tells me that they consider this not a pro camera, which, you know, if you're buying it for photography, if you're going to be taking it on, you know, to do weddings and that kind of thing, which it would do very well, I feel like it needs two slots. So, yeah, that, I feel like that's quite a big miss from Canon, uh, but there we go. I just had to deal with that. I didn't have one on my Sony a7S II, so I'm used to it personally, and I've never had a car fail, but, you know, you hear horror stories all the time. So, yes, I have that to deal with. This camera also does not have sensor stabilisation. We know this. I don't think Canon are really uh, in, in the same league when it comes to that kind of thing at the moment. Um, I also think there's not much excuse because um, I know it's a it's a difficult thing to do because it means bigger bodies and that kind of thing. But really, relatively speaking, how hard is it to do that? Because all of these other companies are doing the same thing. Um, so the tech, you know, how, how can't be that difficult for a, for a, a behemoth of a company like Canon? I think they could have done it in this camera. So. It, it's a, yeah, and it's a biggie because I do like work using primes that don't have stabilization. Um, so yeah, I've got that as that as well to deal with, and you know, coming from the excellent sensor stabilization that is in the A7S II, uh, it, it, yeah, it kind of makes me wonder which camera to take out with me sometimes. There are more cons, of course, but I want this to be a quick video, so. Let's get on with the pros. Firstly, I appreciate that this camera comes with C-Log uh, because the 5D Mark IV, if you remember, originally didn't. It was a paid upgrade. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's there's, there was no excuse not to, so I'm very glad they did. Um, and you know, using HD, it's actually quite a good uh, you know codec that you get. It's a chunky bitrate codec, so using log is actually, I think, fine. Um, it is a more gentle uh, curve, contrast curve, to the ones used in Sony cameras um, and uh, and there are some rules with exposing for that which I'll probably do a separate video for but yeah I appreciate it plus there's no, uh, well the minimum uh, ISO is, you can use it, ISO 100 if you want to um, not that there are many times that I feel like I could do that, we're talking outside uh, in bright da daylight. At the moment I'm fairly well lit and I'm I'm at ISO 3200 believe it or not with uh, f4 an f4 lens So yeah dual pixel autofocus need I say more it's amazing uh, It's it just tracks me I can see in the corner of my eye. There's a box around my face and getting closer it just know it just knows where to go and Yeah, it just it's just good it works it doesn't always work, it's not perfect, but you know, I, I didn't have it. I'm adapting lenses to my Sony a7S II, and, which means there's absolutely no autofocus at all. Um, not that it had great autofocus to begin with, even with Sony lenses, uh, and forget the whole, you know, video face tracking. It doesn't happen with that camera. I assume that Sony are, are gonna address that with the next version, but we'll see. Man, the rear screen in this camera is sublime it's again I have this kind of bias not bias but I'm you know I'm comparing it to my Sony and the Sony rear screens are terrible if you haven't used one before my god um, yeah they're not good um, I find that even when shooting in log these rear screens are really good it flips out which I really appreciate it's sensitive to touch and um, all it's completely uh, you touch through the menus, you touch to focus, it's all of that kind of thing um, and it's great and it's sharp and um, yeah, I don't I don't know if it's the very best, it probably isn't, but it's it's up there, it's pretty good. 
Likewise, with the EVF you get in this camera, uh, which I sh I kind of tend to only use if I'm filming uh, in very bright scenarios, and um, you know even then I'd, I'd rather use a monitor with a cover. Um, but it's great to have. Um, you know, I still use the camera for photography, and it's a really good EVF. Um, I don't think it's the best. I recently tried the uh, uh, Fuji X-T3, which has a phenomenal EVF, better than this, but um, it's still good. It's still really good and a massive upgrade again from all of Sony's. The EOS R's adapter options are phenomenal uh, from their RF mount to EF mount. They're just, they work amazingly, you know, performance wise you wouldn't know that I'm adapting mounts. It's just because the, the knee mount is so, it's so good, it's a very wide mount. Uh, and it has lots of pins, uh, lots of connectors. So it works brilliantly, and yeah, no complaints, obviously. The other biggie is that they have uh, one which we, where you can drop in uh, an ND filter, which is just a game changer. It means you can use, you don't have to screw one on the front of your lens, you can use it with um, lenses that have bulbous front elements. Uh, um, it's just fantastic. I, I would say that I, I personally think they all, are all overpriced for what they are, to be honest. I mean, the you'll pay about £400 slash dollars for the the one with the Eric Very ND filter, which I'm probably going to pick up at some point. I've just got the standard one for now, and I haven't actually needed, I haven't really been shooting outside that often recently. Um, so yeah, they're all, they're fantastic. Well done, Canon. Really good, uh, really good innovation, and um, I appreciate you for that. Now this might be a spiky one because this camera does come with digital stabilisation. I know I said it doesn't come with sensor stabilisation but it does have the digital stabilisation which a lot of people uh, they really dislike. Um, I tried it and thought it was pretty good. So you can hate, you can hate me below for that but yeah. Uh, there are two modes, one of them crops in a little bit. I think an acceptable amount, I can handle the amount that it crops in. The enhanced mode crops in quite a lot more and I like the standard mode. I, I would use it if I was just shooting outside handheld, I think I would. It's really fine, It you know, you still get all your autofocus. Um, so at that I appreciate, but it is a, it does sort of feel like a cheap version of sensor stabilisation which I would not be does, does not beat these ones. Sensor stabilization rules. These are a cheap knockoff version, and I think, come on, Canon, just you don't need to do this. Give us sensor stabilization. I'm bundling ease of use and ergonomics into the same group because uh, they're sort of the same thing. Uh, it's coming again from the Sony Alpha cameras. I I really disliked uh, the feel of them from from the off. From the very first time I held one in my hands, I just thought I, I am making ergonomic sacrifices here for uh, features. So uh, it's, it's very nice now to have a camera that's comfortable and works really well. And the, the back end, uh, the menus, uh, remind me a bit of if, say, Apple were to design a DSLR. Um, because everything's really intuitive and everything is, you know, it takes it takes some getting used to, uh, but not as much as the Sony menus. Um, to be fair, after using Sony for years now, I, I don't struggle with them. They're, I find them easy because I'm used to them, but I found that I've got used to the Canon menus a lot, you know, a lot easier. In addition, all the buttons are, they feel really good and they're placed really well and all the dials are really tight and it just feels good. It just, in terms of build quality, it's miles ahead of any Sony camera I've used, and um, it's just one area that you know Canon have, have got pretty nailed, I would say. And finally, the price, not retail price, because I still think it's overpriced. Uh, but I'm talking about used. You can pick up an EOS R for, I mean, I got it for about. 40% off, something like that, uh, and and actually, and it was nearly new. It was a nearly new camera, 
Um, so you can get a phenomenal bargain. So, I so yeah, it, it's not a camera. I can't recommend it to videographers because of all its shortcomings. I, I also can't. I also can't say don't buy it because it kind of makes a lot of sense at the same time. And here's the way I would think about it. Think of the EOS R like a mini C100 Mark II that shoots full frame video instead of Super 35 and shoots great photos. They both have log, they both only shoot in HD, albeit very nice HD, both of them. So yeah, and the more I think of it like that, it starts to look like a bit of a bargain. And particularly if you get it used, I mean, admittedly, you know, if this camera had come out, say, five or six years ago, it would have been pretty groundbreaking. Everyone would have gotten nuts for it. But, you know, there's a lot of competition now. Um, you know, just, yeah, God, look at, look at what Panasonic and Sony are doing. There's a lot of competition. This is not going to be my main camera for shooting whatever I'm doing, music videos or whatever. So, um, but it's great to have and it's very convenient. So yeah, I, well, basically I just, I wanna know what you think. Uh, you know, is this, can you see where I'm coming from with this? Or do you think this camera is just a dud? <laughs> Either way, uh, let, me know, let, me, let me know below, uh, I am curious. Um, and that's it for now, thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe, hit the blob, and until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Carries me